cross runway. I think what he'll do is um, he'll uh, backtrack a little bit and then take off to the south. That wind is uh, swinging quite a bit now. It certainly is. The anticipated southerly has arrived. So rather than a downwind takeoff, he'll accept the wind. Yeah. Always better where possible to do a takeoff into wind. Gives you better performance. You don't have to be going as fast over the ground to take, get your airspeed up. Well, that's certainly something that the caribou cannot be accused of going fast <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> I believe we're up at the Hunter Valley Air Show when you were talking about the caribou fast flyby and how it's measured in minutes as opposed to seconds. Incredible to think that this aircraft first uh, flew the prototype in July 1958. Powered by two uh, 1450 horsepower Pratt and Whitney Raiders R2000s. today by uh, Dick Elliott. first aircraft on their delivery flight to Australia were actually diverted to Vietnam and uh, the transport flight Vietnam as they were known then became uh, Wallaby Airlines operated by both 35 and 38 Squadron RAAF. Was 38, I thought 38 Squadron was more operating here in Australia? Yeah, yeah that's and right. 35 was operated up in Vietnam. I remember, remember seeing one of these uh, was damaged in Vietnam, it was disassembled, came back to Australia and they actually flew the fuselage up uh, the river to Bankstown for repairs under a Chinook. <laughs> that would have been pretty spectacular. Haas has two of these aircraft, uh, 234 and serial number 210. And it's fantastic that they are keeping these aircraft flying because it's where they had to deliver supplies under fire. And uh, I've got a friend who used to fly them up there and he said it was not unusual, say if you were delivering fuel, you would land the aircraft very short, you would then have the ramp at the back open, the load master would uh, unhook all of the fuel drums, you'd reverse the aeroplane, and then you would put full power on and all the drums would roll out. <laughs> it's quite a form of delivery. I believe they also would come into some strips and have uh, T-28s or Sky Raiders on the wing tips firing down the sides of the strip. Yeah, to kick the uh, bad guys' heads down. There we go. I think we're going to see a uh, short landing here. Up in Vietnam they flew over 80,000 sorties and delivered over 36 million kilos of uh, freight and about 677,000 uh, passengers, we'll call them passengers anyway. <laughs> Ranging from troops to civilians. They also used to 
um, when villages had to be relocated, they'd go in there, all their livestock, everything they had would be put in the back. So it wasn't unusual to have a, a payload that consisted of pigs in cages, water buffalo and people. You just have to take a lot of care to wash that out because there's nothing quite like animals who are scared to uh, ruin the interior of an aircraft. And of course, that was one of the uh, one of the major problems with it, the corrosion that that caused. Yeah. I'm told that the Americans uh, phased out their last caribou in 1985, and it was the last aircraft was being used by the Golden Knights, their parachute demo team. But, and you'd have the, I believe it was the Lone Master, standing up uh, in the hatch behind the pilots and helping keep an eye on the uh, wingtips and making sure that the props weren't chewing anything up on the ground.